Hi, my name is Molly Crenshaw. I specialize in undergraduate instruction of human anatomy and physiology. Now we are going to discuss the lower respiratory system, but I'll assume that you need a quick review of some of the structures we discussed with the upper respiratory system. As you can see here, the upper respiratory system is formed by the nasal cavity, the pharynx, which would receive air from both the nasal and the oral cavities, and then finally, the larynx, the homing place of your vocal system. As we lead into the structures of the lower respiratory system, we see they begin just inferior to this larynx. It includes first off, the trachea, which subdivides into tiny tubules known as bronchi and bronchioles, all of these together forming what we know as the lungs. Let's begin by examining the trachea. His location is significant, sitting at the anterior aspect of the chest and of the throat. It sits below the larynx and runs to the location of the fifth thoracic vertebra, where you can see it undergoes a bifurcation or a splitting into the components of the bronchial tree that we will examine in more detail in just a moment. Structurally, the trachea is unique due to the series of cartilaginous rings that line its length. These cartilaginous rings are formed with hyaline cartilage, which is both sturdy and flexible at the same time. If you run your finger along the front of your throat, you can feel the ridges formed by these cartilaginous rings. You'll also notice that the structure is anterior to the muscular esophagus. If we fade this esophagus and take a look at this posterior view of the trachea, you see these cartilaginous rings are not complete around the entire body of the trachea. By watching the video, we see the significance of these mini structures and how they contribute to the physiology of breathing. The trachea conveys air between upper and lower respiratory structures. This flexible tube extends from the larynx to the upper chest where it divides into the bronchi. Between 15 and 20 cartilaginous C-shaped rings keep the trachea from collapsing or overexpanding. The shape of these cartilaginous rings allows the trachea to change shape to accommodate masses of food passing through the esophagus. Smooth muscle of the trachea can contract to decrease its diameter, which allows air to be expelled out of the lungs more forcefully during coughing. We will further examine the structures of the bronchial tree along with the physiology of breathing in a moment but it's important to step back and take a look at the anatomy of the entire thoracic cage before we do so. In 36.5, you examine how the bronchial tree and the lungs are situated within the thoracic cage, which we've already discussed in earlier sections as being formed by the sternum anteriorly, the ribs, and then of course, posteriorly by the vertebral column. You can see that the left lung and the right lung are situated so that they hug around the heart and then are bordered inferiorly by the diaphragm. Now by re-examining the heart, you'll notice that it does fit into a niche between the two lungs. And if we hide the heart, you'll notice there's a tiny series of holes sitting on the most medial aspect of both the right and the left lung. This begins our discussion of the anatomy of the lungs. So we'll begin first with the right lung. Housing all of the tiny tubules of the bronchial tree, the right lung is divided into what we know as three lobes. Superior lobe, a middle lobe, and an inferior lobe. Now, these lobes are divided by what are known as fissures, which we can see here as the horizontal fissure and the oblique fissure. In comparison, we see the left lung is only divided into two separate lobes, a superior lobe and an inferior lobe, divided from one another by an oblique fissure. That hilum that we were discussing a second ago can be seen here if we look at the medial aspect of the right lung. It is this space here, and of course, this is a new term, so it's important to remember pronunciation. Root or hilum of lung. And you see here a simple description, the hilum being a triangular depression where structures that form the root of the lung enter and leave. By examining these structures, we see that first off, components of the bronchial tree, such as the primary bronchus, and the diverging secondary bronchi, begin to enter the lung. 
but you also review structures of the cardiovascular system. Pulmonary arteries, as you will recall, convey deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle to the lungs. And then of course the pulmonary veins, which you see here, will return oxygenated blood from the lungs to the left atrium of the heart. That way, oxygenated blood can be distributed back through the systemic circuit. These are important components and help us review the entire functionality of the body as a whole. Best of luck to you as you study, and I look forward to continuing on with our discussion of the respiratory system in further lectures. I hope this has helped you see how to walk through use of the Visible Body Software program and how beneficial it can be both in class and during individual student study time. Thank you.